Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons. If you're a student or a beginning breeder, this video will greatly help you to understand breeding and selection process. And uh, as usual, I recommend you to stop video here, read the problem, try to solve this problem on your oven first, and when you would be ready, you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. So here's the problem. In tomatoes, red color is dominant to yellow and tall is dominant to dwarf. The golden beauty variety has yellow fruit and is tall. The dwarf giant is dwarf and has red fruit. So here is the two questions. Question A. If you crossed a golden beauty with dwarf giant, what would you expect? And here is a hint. Both varieties are homozygous for their traits. So how we are going to start solving this problem? First of all, we need to list down uh, genotypes and we have two uh, plants. One is uh, golden beauty and it is yellow, has yellow fruit and it is tall. So we know that uh, yellow color um, is recessive and red color is dominant. So uh, what different uh, genotypes are possible with two alleles? So let's uh, capital R be dominant allele for the red color. So the first uh, variant would be capital R and capital R and this is going to be red. Second variant can be capital R and small r and this is going to be also phenotypically red. And the last variant can be small r and small r. And this phenotypically would be yellow. So this one would be yellow. And the first two would be red. So also we know that the second trait is uh, tallness. And once again, we have two alleles here and three different variants for these alleles. So the first variant would be capital T and capital T. And this would be phenotypically tall plant. Second variant would be capital T and small t. And once again, this is also going to be tall plant. And the last one would be small t small t and uh, phenotypically this is going to be small. So this is going to be small and this is going to be tall. So now we are ready to list uh, genotypes of both uh, cultivars and uh, first one golden beauty has yellow fruit and uh, yellow fruit we can get if the genotype would be small r small r. So the genotype of the uh, golden beauty would be small r, small r. And it is tall. So it can be with a heterozygous for this second trait or homozygous dominant. So which one to choose? Um, here we have a hint. If you cross golden beauty and dwarf giant, what would you expect? And here is a hint. Both varieties are homozygous for both traits. So means uh, this is homozygous for this trait and this is homozygous for this trait. And this is for homozygous for the color and this is also homozygous for the color. And this is going to be heterozygous and this also going to be heterozygous. So if we know that uh, both traits are uh, homozygous, so we can choose only this one for the second trait and not this one. So the genotype would be small r small r and capital T capital T. This is for the golden beauty variety and we cross it with another genotype of the dwarf giant that is dwarf and has a red fruit. So we can choose once again between these two because we told that uh, both traits are uh, homozygous, so uh, red color means can be caught by this only um, 
variant so capital R capital R and this is going to be dwarf uh, and that means that uh, we have to choose this uh, genotype here so small t small t so now we have two parents and both genotypes are listed here so what genotype uh, we expect in the f1 generation so this is going to be parental generation so in F1 generation, we are going to get all the progeny that is going to be capital R and small r and capital T, small t. So this is uh, very easy. When we cross uh, these two parents, we have two genes and two traits. And if we build a Punnett square, so... Uh, this is going to be genotype of one parent, so parent 1 here, parent 2 here, and this is going to be capital R, capital R. So if we build a Punnett square, as you see, all the progeny going to be capital R, small r. So no other variants. And the same is true for the second gene and second trait. Here we have two... Um, capital T's and here we have two small T's if we'll build a Punnett square once again we are going to get the same results all the progeny going to be heterozygous for this trait so that's how we got this F1 generation to be heterozygous for both traits now we can answer our question what you what would you expect so what phenotype we would expect? So this is genotype, but phenotypes, this is going to be red. This is going to be red. And this is going to be tall plant. So all uh, F1 generation going to be tall and will have red uh, fruits. So now we are ready to start working on the second question, question B. If you used the two varieties to start, could you eventually obtain a homozygous variety which uh, was tall with red fruit? So basically uh, our question is if we start with this parental generation and then uh, we cross them and we'll get this F1 generation and that is going to be genotypically uniform. So all the plants in this generation are going to have the same genotype. So would we, we be able to get um, plants that is going to be homozygous for um, trait for the color that is going to be red and uh, that is going to be also tall. So same phenotype but this time we should get a capital R here and capital T here. Why it is important? This is important in order to get true breeding plants because these plants are not true breeding. What is the difference between true breeding and not true breeding? When we cross this uh, genotype with itself we are going to get different varieties. Some would be tall and would have yellow flowers or yellow fruits. Some would be uh, small and would have uh, yellow fruits. Some would be um, tall and would have uh, red or yellow fruits. So as you see uh, in next generation, F2 generation, we would have segregation of traits. But uh, true breeding plant is the plant that when we have uh, red fruits and if it is tall, if we self-pollinate it, self-cross, in this next generation uh, all the 100% of the progeny also would be red and tall. So uh, our next step would be cross uh, this parent that is uh, heterozygous for both genes. So we have basically cross it capital R and small r, capital T, small t genotype with itself, capital R, small r, and capital T, small t. So uh, 
what uh, kind of progeny we can expect from such a cross, we can find uh, if we would list all the possible variants for the gametes. Gametes are haploid and as you see these two parents uh, would be deployed. So we would have uh, two alleles for each uh, locus and uh, what kind of gametes each uh, parent can produce. So this would be the first variant, uh, capital R and capital T. Second variant would be for the gametes capital R and small t. So capital R and small t. And third variant would be small r and capital T. Small r and capital T. And the fourth variant would be small r and small t. And the second parent also would produce the same gametes because the genotype of this parent is the same as this parent. So we can list uh, all these four variants of the gametes uh, in a table. So we're going to build a Punnett square. So the first variant of the gamete would be capital R, capital T, just like here. Second variant would be capital R and small t. Third variant would be small r and capital T. And the last variant would be small r and small t. Now we can build a Punnett square and find all the possible genotypes and phenotypes as a result of such a cross. So we are going to get here 16 uh, cells because we cross four uh, gametes, different variants of the gametes with four different variants of the gametes of the parent one. So this is parent one here with uh, parent two. So this is going to be parent two genotype here. So here we are going to get capital R, capital R, capital T, capital T. Here, capital R, capital R, capital T, small t. And capital R, small r here. And capital T, capital T here. Capital R, small r here. And capital T, small t here. Next column would be capital R, capital R here, and capital T, small t here, capital R, capital R here, and small t, small t, capital R, small r, capital T, small t, capital R, small r, and small t, small t. Next column would be capital R, small r, capital T, capital T, capital R, small r, and capital T, small t, uh, small r, small r here, and capital T, capital T, small r, small r, and capital T, small t. And the last column would be capital R, small r, capital T small t and capital R small r small t small t and small r small r and capital T and small t and small r small r and small t small t. So once again let me remind the question was uh, would we be able to get in the following generation uh, through breeding plants for the uh, plant that is going to be tall and would have red uh, fruits. And as you see, this genotype would be true breeding for both these traits. So it would have uh, both dominant alleles R and both dominant alleles T. All the rest genotypes, as you see, would have at least one recessive allele, so we cannot uh, call them true breeding. Another true breeding uh, would be here, 
this is going to be true breeding for the uh, yellow color and uh, it's going to be small and also would be true breeding so this parent here if we self-pollinate it always would produce uh, plants that is going to be stable same color and same tallness and this parent also would produce uh, stable results all its progeny if we if we'll self pollinate self cross it would be yellow and small but you may also have uh, questions how we can differentiate uh, this uh, phenotype here from this phenotype because this phenotype is going to be the same uh, f uh, f fruits going to be red and plant going to be tall and this is not the only genotype that looks uh, the same this is also would be uh, red flowers and it's going to be tall and this one and this one and uh, this one also produce red fruits and would be tall and this one and this and this one and and the rest uh, would be uh, different so we would have uh, as you see one two three four five six seven eight nine nine out of sixteen that is going to be phenotypically uh, tall and would have red fruits how we would know which one would be uh, homozygous uh, for both alleles and this is also easy we have to cross uh, all these nine uh, genotypes or all this uh, progeny that is going to have uh, red fruits and going to be tall with this genotype here and this we call test crossing so we know th uh, this genotype for sure but we don't know this uh, genotype of this uh, phenotype so we if we cross uh, all this uh, phenotypically tall plants with red fruits with this uh, genotype if this is going to be heterozygous as you understand uh, the progeny would uh, be different different tallness different uh, uh, color of the fruits but only this plant would stably produce 100% uh, of its progeny that is going to be uh, tall and would have uh, red fruits this is how we can find that this parent is homozygous dominant for both traits and for both genes and this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.